Hi guys. I am out here enjoying this lovely sunset behind me and the full moon rise. The first full moon rise of 2022, I believe it's the full moon on the rise. And what a gorgeous moon it is. That would be Monday, January 17th, 2022, where it looks like we might be getting the very first frost of the year in the Point Lonesome Swamp here in the Oasis of Freedom. The first frost of the year on January 17th. But anyway, uh, you're getting a special bonus chronicle of the collapse uh, since this kind of gives me an excuse to sit here and watch this beautiful moonrise without having to be out in the wind. And uh, anyway, I was going to uh, do a full-fledged rant responding to some comments by this fellow, what is his name, Rotor Tiller one I believe. Uh, Rotor Tiller, I don't know how to describe this guy. He's not exactly a troll, uh, but he is just doing what I encourage people to do here on Collapse Chronicles, and that's to have the debate about the single biggest story in the history of humanity, which is the collapse not only of this global civilization, but the extinction of this species, and more importantly, every other species of earthling we share this planet with. So maybe I will come back to a full, uh, a, a, a full rant on Rotor Tiller's comments and whatnot, but I'm just going to give you the Cliff Notes version because we have had a news alert out of nowhere uh, so, just real quickly, the Cliff Notes version, you know, the whole argument, this big question of when all of this house of cards is coming down, it's never been that interesting to me. Uh, it, it, it's, we all agree that it's coming down, and I guess the only question to, left to answer is when. And the best answer I have ever come up with is back when I was interviewing people who are uh, probably a lot smarter than me and Rotor Tiller put together. I'm going to mention two interviews here. One was with uh, Tim Garrett. That uh, He's a physicist at the University of Utah who, who really put it in perspective to me. So two years ago, in 2020, uh, Tim Garrett was explaining to me how over the next 30 years, that sometime between 2020 and 2050, over this next 30 years, that this planet uh, is going, you know, thanks to, I need to put on my old man glasses to bring this beautiful moon into focus, uh, that sometime in the next 30 years, that extrapolating the curve pretty much, you know, going back to 1750, that we are going to do to this planet in the next 30 years what we have done in the past 270 years, that the cumulative impact of, uh, you know, too many people eating too much stuff that the global industrial economy is going to eat as much as this planet in the next 30 years as we've eaten in the past 250 years, where we're already eight times overshoot today. And as Tim Garrett said, something has to give. It's not a question of will something give. Something is going to give in the next 30 years. And that is the best answer that I have ever heard, that it is pretty much to expect that this planet can take the hit that humans have given it in the last 250 years over the next 30. Uh, it, it's a violation of the laws of physics. It cannot happen without some major collapse, some bottleneck event. 
And uh, so is, for the time being, I'm going to be sitting here chronicling it. But that's my best answer I have ever heard. I'm with Tim Garrett on this. Sometime in the next 30 years, something's got to give. And I also like this answer when I was speaking to uh, this journalism professor and this brilliant intellectual Robert Jensen from the University of Texas. I was talking about, you know, the human extinction movement. You know, talking about, he was, Robert Jensen clearly does not believe that humans are going to be extinct. Uh, by 2026 or 2030 or anywhere along the line. And, uh, you know, when I was talking to him about it, you know, his answer is that nobody can sit here and eliminate any possibility of something, you know, like from the movie Don't Look Up, you know, some sort of asteroid or whatever, can you 100% eliminate the scenario that's going, that something in the next uh, now four to six, four to eight years is going to pretty much destroy civilization and possibly make the human race go extinct? You cannot eliminate that possibility, but to go around predicting it anybody going around talking out their ass that this civilization, this juggernaut, uh, it is, is going to collapse uh, by 2026 or by 2030. Uh, you know, it's just egotistical. What did he say? It is hubris. It is the same <clears throat> hubris uh, that got us into the mess that we're in, uh, that nobody uh, can consider, anybody who tells you that this civilization is going to collapse in the next four to eight years or more than that, that humans are going to be extinct, they're, they're, they're talking out their ass, they are, uh, they are guilty uh, 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 of narcissistic hubris, whatever the words you want to use for it. I don't buy it for one minute. I, uh, I, I will extend this, uh, this uh, invitation to Rotor Tiller. Rotor Tiller, I will bet you $1,000 right now that there will be more human beings on this planet in 2026 than there are now. Do you take me up on it, brother? We're going to come back in four years, and there will be a hell of a lot more people on this planet uh, in four years than there are now. Anyway, so uh, I, I, was, I was planning my own little uh, holier-than-thou snobby, you know, trying to meet Rotor Tiller at his own level of hubris, you know, I, I guess talking about some scenario out of the middle of nowhere, talking, you know, what are they called, black swan events and whatnot, you know, planning my rant, which I might come back with, and then I go right over to the mainstream media news, right here, as this came on the mainstream media news, uh, <laughs> about two hours ago, right here, in Reuters news, uh, we have a Reuters news exclusive right here on Yahoo News. Major U.S. airline CEOs warn 5G could ground planes and wreak havoc. And before I dive into this, I, I, I want to uh, admit right up front, I am a Luddite. I don't know what the hell this 5G is about. I think I understand it well enough that the 5G smartphone towers that they're bringing online, apparently on Wednesday, that this huge new network of uh, 5G towers is not the same thing as the 5G Wi-Fi 
towers that have all of the conspiracy wackos panties in a wide. So most people, I assume, don't even know. Uh, the, it, I sure as hell don't pretend to know. I think I understand that they're talking about these new cell phone towers. Uh, and, and it's not the same thing as what those uh, conspiracy wacko fear mongers are talking about, those little rooftop 5G Wi-Fi antennas. Okay, these are the new big cell phone towers uh, that, that this article is talking about. I, I heard that, you know, when I was complaining, uh, you know, I bought one of these damn uh, <clears throat> new $700 Verizon smartphones and uh, a couple of months ago and I was totally pissed off uh, about how the thing kept dropping calls and was completely worthless out here in the Point Lonesome Swamp and I remembered the young man, this was a few weeks ago, he said just hold on tight that on January 19th that they're going to turn on this new 5G cell phone tower that services uh, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp. And uh, he said you really should see a major improvement in your smartphone performance starting the day after tomorrow. So I've been waiting around in, in great anticipation for this. And now, here it is on Monday evening, right here in the mainstream media news, right after uh, Rodor Tiller was talking about how I am not basically paying enough attention to black swan events. And guys, I'm not even sure what the hell they're talking about. Even reading the news, this is a horrible article. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to read it. I'm going to put the link on it, and I'm sure there's going to be a shitload more of these articles tomorrow because apparently, I guess, global industrial civilization uh, could collapse on Wednesday. There you go. Take it away, Reuters News. Ugh. The chief, I'm just going to read the article uh, verbatim. Uh, I don't know enough about it to comment on it other than say maybe Rotor Tiller uh, knows something I don't know, knows something that I and Robert Jensen and, uh, and Tim Garrett aren't aware of. <clears throat> the chief executives of major U.S. passenger and cargo carriers on Monday this afternoon warned of an impending, quote, catastrophic, close quote, aviation crisis this Wednesday. We're pretty much talking 36 hours from now when ATT and Verizon are set to deploy new 5G service. The airlines warned the new C-band, whatever the hell that means, the new C-band 5G service could potentially make a significant number of wide-body aircraft unusable and, quote, could potentially strand tens of thousands of Americans overseas unless our major hubs are cleared to fly the vast majority of the traveling and shipping public will essentially be grounded. This is 36 hours from now, uh, wrote the chief executives of American Airlines, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, Southwest Airlines, and others. The FAA has warned that potential interference, I, I guess, uh, and, and this is where they lose me, potential interference, you know, from these new 5G cell phone towers uh, getting unleashed on Wednesday 
could affect sensitive airplane instruments such as altimeters and impact on low visibility operations. Uh, quoting the uh, CEO's quote, this means on a day like yesterday, more than 1,100 flights and 10,000 passengers would be subjected to cancellations, diversions, or delays, it cautioned. Action is urgent, they added in the letter, also signed by UPS, Atlas Air, JetBlue Airways, and FedEx Express, quote, to be blunt, the nation's commerce will grind to a halt. We're talking 36 hours from right now. To be blunt, the nation's commerce will grind to a halt. Yes. The letter, which was seen by Reuters, went to White House National Economic Council Director Brian Deese, Transportation Secretary Pete Bootgeeg, Federal Aviation Administration Administrators Steve Dixon and Federal Communications Commission Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel. Airlines for America, the group that organized the letter, declined to comment. The government agencies involved did not comment. So what is going on here? ATT and Verizon, which won nearly all of the C-band spectrum in an $80 billion auction last year on January 3rd, agreed to create buffer zones around 50 airports, I assume all of them here in the U.S., to create buffer zones around 50 airboats, airboats, listen to me, airports to reduce interference risks and take other steps to cut potential interference for six months. They also agreed to, de to delay deployment for two weeks, which now means in 36 hours, until Wednesday, temporarily averting an aviation safety standoff, the CEOs of major airlines and Boeing chief executive Dave Calhoun held a lengthy call with Budacek and Dixon on Sunday to warn of the looming crisis, officials told Reuters. The airlines asked, quote, that 5G be implemented everywhere in the country except within the approximate two miles, a two mile radius of airport runways, close quote, at key airports, quoting the, uh, the letter, quote, immediate intervention is needed to avoid significant operational disruption to air passengers, shippers, supply chain, and delivery of needed medical supplies, close quote. The airlines added that flight restrictions will not be limited to poor weather operations, quote, multiple Modern safety systems on aircraft will be deemed unusable, causing a much larger problem than what we knew. Airplane manufacturers have informed us that there are huge swaths of the operating fleet that may need to be indefinitely grounded, close quote. The carriers added they urge action to ensure that, quote, 5G is deployed except when towers are too close to airport runways until the FAA can determine how that can be safely accomplished 
without catastrophic disruption, close quote. <coughs> the FAA said on Sunday it had cleared an estimated 45%. This was yesterday. The FAA said it had cleared an estimated 45% of the U.S. commercial airplane plane fleets to perform low visibility landings at many airports where 5G C-band will be deployed starting on Wednesday. The airlines noted on Monday that that list did not include many large airports. Ah, and there you go. Ah. <laughs> I definitely highly recommend that you do not look up on Wednesday. Uh, I don't know, maybe the sounds of those, uh, those underground bunkers are sounding better to me. So, I mean, I'm looking at the lights from the airport right here. I can see the lights of the airport, and apparently the new cell phone tower is right there the new Verizon 5G tower is more than two miles from my airport. Ah, so uh, enjoy your enhanced smartphone service on Wednesday and uh, hope someone calls you to let you know just in time before a giant cargo plane slams into your living room. So, uh, <laughs> guys, <clears throat> you know, rotor tiller, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm, uh, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm just not looking up enough and not being, uh, not being alarmist enough. Uh, but anyway, my prediction is this is going to be another one of those Y2K fizzles. There are going to be a few flight interruptions for a few days. This is, this is going to be all over the news. Uh, this is going to be one of the big news stories tomorrow. It probably already is. All of these doomsday, uh, these doomsday prophets are going to be out there. The, the, the conspiracy wackos are probably out there now all over YouTube screaming uh, how we're all doomed starting on Wednesday. Uh, we were all doomed starting 50 years ago. This, this, is, uh, this, this whole thing uh, with this 5G, both the cell phone towers and the, uh, and the Wi-Fi antennas, whatever happened to that conspiracy theory? I, I haven't heard much of that since Corona panic started. Uh, where, where are we with that one? All of this shit is what it is are, are just more ingredients of the toxic stew uh, of, of this uh, as all of the this technology that this mad scientist technology you know exploding all over this planet is going to have these unintended consequences uh, there's going to be unintended consequences here, unintended consequences there. Uh, it, it, it's, it's all little, you know, it's tightening of the noose. Uh, but I am not ready to say uh, that uh, as much as I wish that uh, global industrial civilization has collapsed and humans are extinct by 2026 or 2030. Ain't going to happen. Rotor Tiller, uh, I will bet you $1,000 uh, 
uh, that you're barking up the wrong tree because you're listening to all of that fear-mongering crap uh, of, the, uh, of those damn narcissists over there in the, uh, in, in the near-term human extinction movement. But uh, listen to Tim Garrett, something has to give in the next 30 years. Something has to give. And I would say I am, with each passing year, I am more and more joining the uh, Seneca collapse. Who was that? Yuri? Oh no, I'm having a sing, sing, uh, senior moment here. I interviewed him too. Yuri, somebody with the Seneca collapse. Uh, this shit is, is going to grind right on. It's going to keep ramping more and more up. I'm already hearing talk of 6G. They're already talking about 6G, Windows 11, uh, all of this crap. Uh, it's going to keep going right on and on and on as business as usual and, uh, until we hit the wall. But maybe I will get a full rant in response to Rotor Tiller's comments some other day. But right now, uh, I'm going to go out there and enjoy this beautiful moonrise while I still can and uh, wait for Jack Frost to come nipping at my pumpkin. I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy this gorgeous full moon while you still can. Bye guys. This little dog, tomorrow is our last day, our last day before global industrial civilization collapses. What do you think of that? Sancho, what do you think of global industrial civilization collapsing on Wednesday? But we ought to have some decent cell phone coverage on our way out of here. Let's go out and look at the full moon. Bye, guys.